The history of Giza before the Great Pyramids of the 4th Dynasty is a subject I've covered in a number of videos, as I find more pieces of the puzzle that prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the Giza Plateau was occupied long before King Khufu set foot on it. This early history often goes unmentioned. It feels like forbidden history, a forbidden topic to research, and I think this could well be because certain people don't want the debate over the age of the Sphinx to resurface. When you read about Giza in any book, or when you watch any TV documentary, we get the impression that the origins of Giza are firmly rooted in the 4th dynasty, but this is simply not the case. And this past week I've been presented with yet more supporting evidence of pre-4th dynasty occupation, hard scientific evidence that nobody can refute. The evidence is there for all to see, scientific data and archaeological finds which together prove that there was substantial activity on the Giza Plateau, long before the blueprints of the Great Pyramid were drawn up. In this video, I'll be giving you a brief recap of the archaeological evidence and then we'll take a look at the new scientific data that's come to light. Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. Back in pre-dynastic and early dynastic times, from at least 5,500 to maybe 4,700 years ago, the Giza Plateau would have been a prime location for late pre-dynastic and early dynastic ancient Egyptians. It's situated at the beginning of the Nile Delta. It's a large and relatively flat plateau of limestone bedrock, adjacent to a now defunct branch of the River Nile. It's an obvious place for people to settle, and, in my opinion, it would be more surprising if nobody had lived at Giza before Khufu's pyramid project. And the idea of a Giza settlement before Khufu really isn't pseudoscience, because evidence has been uncovered by respected archaeologists and scientists. It's just that the evidence never seems to make it to TV documentaries or books. I've made many videos on this subject, all of which are linked below in the description, and so now I'll briefly recap the evidence, and then I'll present something new and compelling. The history of Giza started in the pre-dynastic period, and that's because a number of pieces of pre-dynastic Madi culture pottery have been found at a number of locations on the plateau. The specimens have been documented. We have photographs and sketches, but it has to be said that the information is not easy to find, and not many even know about Giza's pre-dynastic artefacts. There was also a pre-dynastic Madi settlement not far from Giza, and, due to the finds mentioned, it is a fair assumption that the Madi culture did have a level of occupation on the Giza plateau as well. And there's more, because as well as pre-dynastic, we also find early dynastic archaeology at Giza, including important tombs to the south of the main 4th dynasty pyramid field. And then we have the Wadi Cemetery. It's close to the Great Pyramid, just north of the pyramid's adjacent western cemetery. It was excavated in 1904 by George Reisner and was found to be beneath an ancient dump, a dump that dates back to early in King Khufu's reign. Sand, sediment and settlement debris had been cleared from the Giza Plateau to make way for Khufu's western cemetery to be constructed, and it was dumped right here, on a pre-existing cemetery. 77 ancient tombs were discovered, 243 photographs were taken, but in the grand scheme of things, very little excavation work was done in 1904. It is believed to date back to the late 3rd to early 4th dynasty, aka during Snefru's reign, but there is a good argument it could be even older. 
Before Khufu used the plateau for his pyramid project, Reisner believed that Giza was already in use as a Memphite necropolis, but of secondary status to Maidum, Dashur and Saqqara, only rising to high prominence when Khufu selected this site for his pyramid project. And what else is there? Well, we have the controversial dating of the Sphinx enclosure, and I believe there is enough geological evidence to say that the first phase of the enclosure, as well as the associated Sphinx temple, date back to before the 4th dynasty. This bedrock cutting was done to extend the Sphinx temple, is part of a second phase of work, and has been firmly dated to the 4th dynasty by Egyptologists. But, as we can see, the quarried bedrock does look quite fresh. It's far less eroded than the original enclosure wall it's cut into, implying the original enclosure was cut sometime, maybe a long time before the 4th dynasty. But this does not mean the Sphinx itself as a monument was pre-4th dynasty. For all we know, it could have been a large lump of rock in the middle of a working quarry, known as a quarry block, but it does mean this enclosure or quarry, whatever its original purpose, as well as the associated temple was created before Khufu set foot on the plateau. At this point, I'd like to point you to a new book by geologist Colin Reader, released later this week called Rewriting the History of the Great Sphinx. Colin has been kind enough to send me an advanced copy, and although I'm only a third of the way through, so far it really is a fantastic read, as he puts forward a truly compelling case to push back the date of the Sphinx enclosure. And this really isn't pseudoscience. There are 15 fact-filled chapters and the book has been published by Archeopress. I've left a link to order your copy in the description below. And then we have the Chroma Dump, located on the Giza Plateau, and after new excavations in the 21st century by the AERA, it has become somewhat controversial. In the 1970s, Carl Cromer led excavations of the dump, a dump that nobody denies was created in the 4th dynasty of ancient Egypt. But as well as the finds dating back to the reigns of Khufu and Khafre, Cromer believed he found evidence of pre-4th dynasty occupation as well. The finds include early dynastic clay ceilings and also pottery shards. In total, there are 104 clay ceilings that were thought to be pre-Khufu, and Mera Torsio Regillo, an expert on ancient Egyptian clay ceilings, says in her work that the seals that were found in the Chroma Dump attest to occupation at Giza from the proto-dynastic period through the Thinite dynasties and Xhosa age, and then into the 4th dynasty. In the new excavations of the dump by the AERA, several hundred clay ceiling fragments were discovered, but apparently none were dated to the early dynastic. None of them were older than King Khufu. Furthermore, according to a 2024 publication by the AERA, the majority of the chroma ceilings that were found in the 1970s have now been laser scanned, and I'm told there is doubt over Chroma and Regillo's pre-4th dynasty interpretations. Therefore, the chroma dump being evidence of pre-Khufu activity at Giza now hangs in the balance. I've emailed the head of the clay ceilings team at the AERA and hopefully they can clarify the current stance on Chroma's finds. I'll hopefully get some detailed information as to why Regillo's interpretation was incorrect. And if I do, I'll be sure to share it on the Ancient Architects channel. But even if the Chroma dump has no early finds, we still have the Madikulja pottery that was found at Giza we still have the early dynastic tombs to the south of the pyramids and a pre-Khufu cemetery to the west of the Great Pyramid. We also have the geological evidence the Sphinx enclosure and Sphinx temple predate the 4th dynasty. And on top of this, there is also an argument that a number of rock-cut structures in Giza's central field 
also predate the Great Pyramid. This is something I'll discuss in a forthcoming video. And now I get to the new evidence, and it's thanks to Martin Odler, PhD, co-author of a paper published in July 2024 titled The Construction of the Giza Pyramids Chronicled by Human Copper Contamination. And this really is a fantastic piece of research, and I am surprised it's fallen under the radar for so many, including me. You can check out Martin's YouTube channel by clicking the link in the description below. The production of copper for tools and everyday objects began in Egypt's pre dynastic period, from at least 4000 BC. Any sizeable settlement would have produced copper on site, and this would leave a signature in sediment, and it's referred to by experts as human made copper contamination. In recent years, scientists have geochemically analysed the sediment core from the Khufu harbour on the Nile floodplain at Giza, close to where the Khufu Valley Temple was once located. This was done so researchers could track the construction of the Giza necropolis, i.e. if Khufu, Khafre and Menkore were leading massive building projects in the 4th dynasty, they would have been using a lot of copper and so sediments from this time should be contaminated accordingly. The core spanned an age range from around 6465 to 1225 BC, from the Neolithic all the way to the New Kingdom, and the sediment was analysed for copper, aluminium, iron, titanium and arsenic. The experts could differentiate between the background concentrations of copper, and that produced by human activity at Giza, and the results really are fascinating. Please note that all forthcoming dates I mention in this video have error margins of plus or minus 80 years. So, the results. The first significant rise in sediment copper contamination was in the late pre dynastic, from around 3265 to 3185 BC. According to the authors of the paper, quote, the sharp increase in metallurgy and copper contamination, providing evidence of local metalworking during this period, is a compelling indication of late pre dynastic activity at the site, which is, however, absent from the current archaeological records. End quote. To note, there was a late pre dynastic cemetery just three kilometres north northwest of Giza, at a place called Kafra Gatati about halfway between Giza and Abu Ruash. We don't find anything substantial on the Giza Plateau itself, but really that's no surprise, because pretty much anything that was older than the 4th dynasty would have been destroyed and cleared to level the land for the new royal necropolis. Any finds would be minimal, and likely out of context. But the science doesn't lie, and the authors of the paper say there was probably an Akeda population practicing metallurgy at Giza, predating evidence from the Memphite region. Interestingly, the next spike in copper at Giza comes in the First Dynasty, from 3035 to 2945 BC and it's believed to be associated with the construction of tombs on the Giza Plateau, some of which still survive to the south of the pyramids. According to the research paper, this period coincided with the final phase of high water levels of the now defunct branch of the Nile, which is called the Khufu branch by researchers, and likely represents a significant phase in the construction of early dynastic monuments particularly on those sites that would eventually form the pyramid fields. As stated, anything below the Old Kingdom pyramid and tomb complexes would have been largely destroyed. But of course, early dynastic tombs ranging from the 1st to 3rd dynasties are located to the south of the Giza necropolis. If you follow the arguments put forward by geologist Colin Reader, 
this could well be a period for the construction of the first phase of the Sphinx Temple, and even the initial cutting of the Sphinx Enclosure Quarry. Back to the data, and we get another spike of man-made copper in the 2nd to 3rd dynasties, between 2795 and 2715 BC. Again, there are tombs to the south of the pyramids attributed to this period. But metalworking at Giza declined abruptly after 2715 BC, suggesting a partial abandonment of Giza until the reign of King Djoser. The authors suggest that socio-economic parameters before the Third Dynasty influence local human behaviour. Then we get major spikes in copper contamination in the 4th dynasty, between 2615 and 2485 BC, a chronological range that corresponds with the construction of the Giza necropolis. Regarding the Great Pyramid, the onset of massive metalworking on the Giza Plateau was 2615 BC which gives us a scientific date for the start of the Great Pyramid building project, but remember with an 80-year error margin. At 2545 BC, there is a moderate decline in copper contamination, and the authors believe that this corresponds with the reign of King Jedefre, Khufu's son, who of course moved away from Giza and built his pyramid at Abu Rawash. The next big spike centres on the date of 2485 BC, and this entire spike likely marks the building projects of Khafre and Menkore. So, we get spikes in human-made copper in line with the dates of the pyramid projects, but interestingly, metallurgy continues on the Giza Plateau throughout the Old Kingdom. It was and continued to be an active site, home to the courts of the kings, and we also know that more tombs continued to be built on the necropolis for later royal officials of varying rank. For this video, I won't go further than the Old Kingdom, but I will mention that we do see a sharp decline in copper contamination after 2155 BC, at the onset of the First Intermediate Period. And this is precisely as we'd expect, and it shows the reliability of the dataset with known history and archaeology of ancient Egypt. In my opinion, the geochemical analysis of sediments from the Khufu harbour is probably the best and most robust evidence that shows the Giza Plateau was active in the late pre-dynastic and early dynastic history of Egypt. Regarding this early history, we have limited and some debatable archaeological evidence, and this is because of the monumental works that took place in the 4th dynasty, which would have all but erased anything that came before. But, in my opinion, the early, unseen history of the Giza Plateau is no longer up for debate. It did exist and now it's for researchers to keep an open mind when interpreting the finds in the field, knowing that at least some of the 4th dynasty necropolis was built on older structures. Older structures that could well have been repurposed and reworked by Khufu, Khafre and Menkore. They could be hiding in plain sight. A rock-cut building that was turned into a tomb, a harbour building that was turned into a temple, or maybe an old lion-esque looking quarry block that was turned into a pharaonic sphinx. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.